welcome to the course corrosion part 2. And today we will just recap what uh, we have uh, discussed in part 1, uh, the important aspects of electrochemical polarization, activation and concentration polarization. So, the first lecture will be on the recap of electrochemical polarization and we have understood uh, in the first lecture lecture this part 1 that there are two kinds of polarization we will talk about consent activation polarization and concentration polarization. Now, when we talked, uh, we started discussing corrosion in part 1, we got into the fundamentals and the fundamentals are based on thermodynamics of electrochemical reactions as well as kinetics of electrochemical reactions. Now, later we got to know from polarization aspect that polarization actually connects thermodynamics aspect which is basically the potential and kinetic aspects which is basically the current density. So, we will just briefly talk about electrochemical polarization so that our consecutive lectures uh, become easy to understand and I would request you to go back to the lectures in part 1, so that it becomes easy. Now, we have understood that if we allow one metal to be dipped into an, an electrolyte containing that particular metal ion, for example, if I have if we see that if this is a beaker and there is an electrolyte which is aqueous electrolyte and where you have metal ion concentration of let us say some activity in the if we mention in the form of activity. So, some activity is there in the in the solution of that particular metal ion and if we dip the same metal m then immediately some potential will be developed and at the same time at the interface of the metal there will be a double layer formation and those double layers we have understood that those double layers are called helmolged double layer and there could be outer double layer outer helmolge layer or plane and there could be inner Helmholtz layer or plane. In short, we call it OHP and this one we call it IHP. IHP is forming on the metal surf on the on the metal and just in front of that particular metal surface in the electrolyte, we have OHP and in this case, this forms OHP and this forms IHP. Now, once we introduce this metal into that electrolyte containing metal ion, we will experience two reactions. One reaction is M n plus plus N e which forming M. At the same time, opposite reaction would also happen N plus. And we should realize that this particular arrangement that that metal inserted or the dipped in that electrolyte containing metal ion at particular temperature and pressure. So, this temperature and pressure both are constant for this particular experimentation. Now, we see that 
one particular reaction is cathodic in nature, cathodic or reduction. And the another reaction is anodic or oxidation. Now, every reaction would try to reach equilibrium for a particular temperature pressure condition, these two reactions would also like to go to equilibrium. Now, if they would like to go to equilibrium, so that means rate of forward reaction if we consider this is to be forward reaction and if this is to be a backward reaction. So, then this rate of forward and backward reactions at that particular temperature pressure condition should be same, should be equal. So, that means at equilibrium we will have m. So, that means forward rate if this is basically rate of forward reaction and this is rate of backward reaction for equilibrium condition R f equal to R b. Now, interestingly for a steady state that time also uh, we have a situation like the rate uh, are equal, uh, rates are equal, but in this case we will see that we are not having any net reaction. Later on we would understand that corrosion event is basically a steady state, steady state process if uh, there are nothing external agents added. So, that time it is a steady state the rate of reduction reaction is equal to rate of rate of oxidation reactions we will see later, but that time there is a constant change in the concern in the in the, in the amount of uh, a species we will see later. But in this case whenever this situation arises we will see that rate of forward and backward reactions are same but at the same time there is no net change in product or reactant. So, that means this and this they will not have any net change. So, the net change if I consider net net should be 0. So, this condition we call it as equilibrium condition. Now, at the same time interestingly if I consider R f, R f is basically reduction process or cathodic process and in the cathodic process we see that electrons are accepted by metal ions and they are actually going to deposit on the metal, metal object. Whereas, in the backward reaction I can see that the electrons are taken away from metal atom and they are forming metal ions. So, once they form metal ions they will be part of that electrolyte. Hence, if we take that rate of electron flow then that can be considered in the form of current because here I could see that the charge which is electron in case of cathodic we are introducing electron. So, that forward reaction is possible and in case of backward reaction we are taking away electron and if we consider the time scale. So, they can be considered as a current flow. Now, in the forward reaction if we consider the rate of charge flow per unit time there will be current and if we consider the overall area of the surface just to normalize it with respect to area and we know why we normalize from corrosion part 1. So, then that can be considered as current density which is small i. Now, this i which is current density which is basically nothing but i by a, a is basically the area. Now, here i is ampere which is current which is basically the rate of charge flow per unit time and then per unit area it becomes current density. And if we see the kinetics of corrosion we have realized that rate of 
any reaction or electrochemical reaction because we have seen that these reaction is electrochemical in nature rate of electrochemical reaction can be expressed in the form of current density. And let us say in this case the forward reaction is deposition and the backward reaction is ion formation. So, then I can express either deposition rate or the dissolution rate in the form of mass per unit time per unit area which is written as m divided by t divided by area it can be related to i a is capital A is nothing but the atomic weight n f. What are those terms? I of course, is the current density, A is atomic weight in gram, n is equal to the number of electrons participating in unit reduction process or oxidation process. And this n in this case, it is easy to understand that this is nothing but oxidation number of that particular metal electrons participating and f is equal to 1 Faraday and this can be calculated from charge of an electron which is 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb into Avogadro number which is nothing but 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 because 1 Faraday is nothing but the charge charge of 1 mole of electrons. So, that becomes 96488 which approximately considered as 96500 coulomb. Now, you could see that the rate of deposition or rate of dissolution, I can term it as cathodic or reduction and in this case, this is oxidation or anodic both can be reflected by this reaction by this particular equation. Now, if I consider this particular process that means, in this case when I am considering reduction process I have to term it with some current density and since the cathodic cathodic process is taking place, I will term this particular current density what is flowing into the circuit, I can term it as I C and this C sub subscript is nothing but the cathodic. And whereas, the backward reaction which is anodic reaction, the current density I can term it as I A. Now, interestingly this I C is actually flowing opposite to I A that means, the flow of current for the anodic reaction, anodic rate rather is from positive to negative, whereas in case of I C is negative to positive. Now, in order to indicate the direction, convention is we put negative sign in front of I C. So, that means it is not a negative current, it is basically the direction of that particular current. And remember if we do not explicitly express that it is a current most of the situations this i small i means current density even if I say current for a small i take it as a current density. Now, for this case if they become equal so that means i 
A C divided by N F for the forward reaction which is nothing but R F should be equal to I A A N F because for both the cases A are same because it is the same area of the metal that is taking part in that reaction. N is the number of electron participating in for unit reaction and F is 1 Faraday. So, that means this part and here this part both are same for both the rates and this is R B which is backward reaction. So, that means I A is equal to I C. Now, since we have to indicate the direction, so that is what we put a negative sign and when this situation arises we call it as I 0 and remember this I 0 is with respect to non deposition uh, with respect to the situation where there is a no net change in that particular process that reversible reaction we do not have any net change. So, that means there is no net dissolution there is no net deposition. So, we call it as I 0 is exchange current density and with respect to non corroding non corroding equilibrium situation fine now at when the system reaches this equilibrium that means the flow of current or the current density for both this backward and forward reactions they are same which is indicated by I 0 which is exchange current density in the non under non corroding equilibrium situation that time the system must have attained some equilibrium potential and that potential we express in the form of n plus m. So, this is a reduction potential. reduction potential and remember our consideration will be all throughout our 40 lectures wherever we consider potential this potential is in the form of reduction potential. Now, this can be written in the form of E 0 m n plus m plus R T n f l n activity of ox divided by that means activity of oxidant divided by activity of reductant and here oxidant is m n plus and activity of m. Now, this is a generalized form for Nernst equation. Where we have considered in the form of activity of that particular metal ion and here E 0 n plus m is nothing but standard reduction potential standard reduction potential. Now, if we write it again so that means m n plus m equal to E 0 m plus m plus r t n f l n a m plus a m. Now, this activity as per thermodynamics we can write in the form of concentration with multiplication after with concentration and activity coefficient in the form of concentration and activity coefficient and this concentration we can write in the form of molarity. So, m n plus activity coefficient of m n plus I can write this way. Now, if the system is not behaving ideally then it must have some finite value which is which could be which are which is different than uh, uh, unity and when this glows to 1 we can call it as 
ideal solution. So, that means that case m n plus equal to molarity of that particular metal ion concentration in the solution. Now, interestingly most of our situations un unless it is specifically mentioned we will consider in the form of molarity assuming that this activity coefficient is 1. And now here we are considering a pure metal though we have not mentioned in the beginning let us consider that it is a pure metal that is dipped into the solution. So, that case activity of m goes to 1. So, that means I can write this equation in the form of molarity n plus m equal to E 0 m n plus m plus R T n f l n fine. So, this is my final equation. Now, interestingly this value this is the actual potential that is being developed on the surface on the, on the metal. Now, if this is 1 then of course, E n plus m equal to E 0 n plus m, but otherwise if this has got value other than 1 then this would be my equilibrium potential when i equal to i 0 in the system that means, in the non corroding system. So, we could see that whenever we have a situation of equilibrium setting up between a metal and metal ion in an electrolyte at a particular temperature pressure we always will develop an equilibrium potential corresponding to that condition. Now, if we can express this one, if we can express this one in the form of energetics, then that energetics will look like this. So, that means, we have double layers and this is m n plus layer, this is m and then at this condition that means, equilibrium potential and when i equal to i 0 reversible condition if I draw the energetics the energetics will look like this. So, that means this is m side this is metal ion side and if this process is taking place that means m minus n e equal to m n plus and if this process is taking place m n plus plus n e equal to m. So, the reduction is the thermally activated jump of metal ion from O H p to I H p crossing a barrier of if I consider this barrier to be this which is del G star this much barrier is crossed by metal ion to go to the metal surface from O H p to I H p after taking n number of electrons. Similarly, if metal is planning to go to the other side from I H p to O H p it has to release any number of electrons to form m n plus but that time also it is crossing the same barrier size barrier height. The as per the thermally activated jump theory these two rates two jump situations are actually having the same barrier same barrier height. If they have same barrier height their rates will be same. So, that means r f equal to r backward or I can write I c equivalently equivalently I or maybe absolute sense you can I can write equal to 
equal to i a a n f equal to i 0 a n f or now we can say equivalently i c equal to i a equal to i 0. So, this energetics is valid for equilibrium condition which is a non corroding situation and when the equilibrium potential is this one and whenever we mention this that means, it is not that condition for m n plus equal to 1 the molarity of that particular metal ion is 1 in that system in some other conditions and when exchange current density is experienced. So, this is the energetics for the equilibrium situation. Now, we will talk more on this and we will get into the polarization concept and then after that we will slowly get into this mixed potential theory and understanding of corrosion events via mixed potential theory. So, let me stop here and in the next lecture we will continue our discussion on this energy distribution in a situation when polarization takes place. Thank you. Thank you.